here's someone who really studied history and really and, and really thought about the the, the, the welfare of, 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 of the country. He he really uh, he really saw one of the duties of a, of a politician was to make lives better for for his fellow man and for his fellow Americans. My guest today is Jeffrey Frank. Jeffrey was a senior editor at The New Yorker, the deputy editor of the Washington Post Outlook section, and a prolific author. His latest book is The Trials of Harry S. Truman, The Extraordinary Presidency of an Ordinary Man, 1945 to 1953. His book is the first full account of the Truman presidency in nearly 30 years, recounting how an ordinary man met the extraordinary challenge of leading America through the pivotal years of the mid-20th century. I recently sat down with Jeffrey, and we talked about how Truman steered our country through one of the most turbulent periods in American history, marked by victory in wars against Germany and Japan, the first use of an atomic weapon, the beginning of the Cold War, and a whole lot more. Jeff, thanks so much for being on the show, and I look forward to speaking to you since we spoke last week. Folks, the name of the book is The Trials of Harry Truman, The Extraordinary Presidency of an Ordinary Man, 1945 to 1953. Uh, Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, Charles. Happy to be there or here. (laughs) All right. So, you know, I've read Harry Truman's uh, biography by McCullough, David McCullough. I can't believe when you told me it's 30 years old, 1992. I went home and just double checked that. And I, it's literally, I read it, it felt like yesterday. In the past 30 years, there hasn't been any other Harry Truman biography that filled the niche that you feel you felt it filled here. There've been other, there've been other Truman, Truman sort of books. And and in the last 30 years, nothing, uh, David McCullough did, you know, a, a cradle to grave book. And, uh, and, and there was a, there have been a couple more like that a guy named Robert Farrell, who was a very, scho- very scholarly, uh, did a very scholarly book about Truman. He's done many books about Truman. He's an admirable, admirable, admirable work. He wrote about sort of all, even about Truman and Pendergrass and so on. But there's no, what I did was something, I was trying to write a biography of a presidency. And that hasn't been done for, yeah, at least 30 years, and just to sort of at his presidency. And it was a really interesting presidency, as you know. Okay, so... You basically sat down. You're a journalist, right? You're not a historian. So right there is a... Well, I would, I would argue that, yes, I would argue that, but I would argue that most great histories today are being written by journalists. And McCullough wasn't trained example, as a historian. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, historian, <laughs> McCullough wasn't trained as a historian and writes fantastic... Uh, yeah, he was trained as a, uh, trained as a journalist, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. okay, so we'll, we're going to let that... But I just wanted to bring that up there because uh, uh, you took a different... V- you you wrote, and I, and I read this book, you wrote it more as uh, a peek into the life of Truman from, a, you, I, you could tell that one is a journalist when, when one read that, when one read the book. I just had that feeling. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I mean, I don't know the difference. That what a journalist, I think, brings to it that that uh, is curiosity. He doesn't stop. A journalist is, tends to sort of wants to go to the source. Where did where did where, where was that from? If you read if you read someone else's book and they you see something, well, where did where did he get that from? You go into it and you go into it. I found you know I found in my own case. I'm not you know I don't want to sort of. <laughs> brag about things, but you know, I, I found myself going again and again to the archives in, in Independence, like with Congress, Clemson, South Carolina, for the James Francis Burns archives, and then traveling. I had to go to Berlin. I had to go to Korea because the Korean War is such an important part of part of his of his presidency. So this, so it isn't it, it isn't just a question of so it, it so these things are deeply researched, and I think journalists tend to be real serious researchers because they're journalists. They they want to get the facts right, and they're and. Uh, and they tend not to outsource things as often academics often do. Right. So why, what is it, 70 years or so from, uh, from, from Truman? Uh, it's going to be 70 years. Uh, why, why do I care? Why, why, does the, why does the American public care so much? Or, or, or you, know, you could have picked any president to write about. Why do they care yeah. so much about Truman and what happened during his presidency? I think, I mean, I would say because so much of it is still with us today. The questions that, the issues that Truman dealt with 70 years ago, they're still here. For example, the uh, the, the, the the borders on Eastern Europe. Stalin considered Poland a, 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 part, a part of Russia, not a part of Russia, but he considered, it, uh, I mean, indistinguishable from Russia in terms of its defense. For, for Stalin, every every sort of, the, the German invasions came through Poland. And, uh, 
And that's not unlike the way I think Putin tends to see Ukraine. It's not, I mean, he's, I mean, he's Stalin was would have gone to war over 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 Poland had there been anything like. I mean, had we anyway had had, had there been a threat. Um, and then NATO is still with us today, uh, 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 an important part of the Western defense against the, against what was the Soviet Union and is threatening to become again the Soviet Union. Um, the, the the United Nations is still with us, and the and Israel. The, the creation of Israel is still with us. The questions that, the issues that people saw as problems in the future, they're still here. People like James Forrestal and Atchison and Secretary of State Marshall, they saw they saw huge problems coming with the creation of Israel. I think Truman made the right decision, but he also, but I don't think people saw that there was going to be a huge, huge, uh, they could have imagined a, a, a sort of a, a gulf between East and West, the oil the oil states and the, and the and, and in the Middle East, and that happened. And they saw it, but they saw it happening. James Forrest, the Secretary of, 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 of Defense, basically said, we have all, we, we're dependent on oil to a huge extent. And we're, de- and that, I mean, we didn't have the sort of independence we have today with, with energy. So all these issues are with us and many more issues that are still with, the race problem is still with us. So that's why we care. And a lot of these things sort of took shape in the Truman era, and they haven't gone away. Okay, so here you have a guy. And what always fascinated, about, fascinated me about Truman is how ordinary he was in every aspect. Here's a guy who's small. He's about 5'9 or so. Uh, he weighs, what, about 140 pounds or so? Like, like <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, he kept his weight all, all yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Was, something was about there. I remember reading uh, somewhere was about there. I forgot exactly what his weight was, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know why I would remember that. But all right. Some say he's 5'8", some say 5'9". I don't know what the thing was. Weighed 167 pounds. That was it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So he's a small, slight guy, and he is pretty much unknown. Uh, you know, when, when, when Roosevelt picks him, FDR picks him, what do they meet once or twice? Yeah, Charlie, let me just say one thing, by the way, they were all, they were all kind of short. Uh, Truman and Stalin and Churchill were all kind of the same size. So, uh, uh, Stalin may have been a little bit shorter than Churchill and, and Churchill and Truman were about the same height. Truman was very conscious of that. It was almost sensitive about it. Yeah, so, no, yeah. no, I'm just saying, yeah, no, you're 100% right. I think, true, I think Churchill was even yeah. smaller than, than, um, yeah, yeah, than Truman. Yeah, so. I think it was five, 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 six. Uh, I don't uh, know. They're all, about the, they're all about the same height. You see pictures of them in, at Potsdam. You see these three short guys. Yeah, just amazing. But yeah. here you have, he's, <laughs> he's in the shadow thing. of FDR, uh, yeah. who's aristocracy, who uh, led this country from 1933 from the midst, from the depths of the uh, Depression to almost the one yard line right before uh, winning uh, World War II. And you have this guy, Truman, not well known. FDR kept him at bay, and all of a sudden, just a heartbeat, literally a heartbeat, he's whisked away from the Senate floor. I think he was at the Senate on the Senate floor that day, were playing cards or drinking. I forgot exactly. He may, he may, have, been, may, may have been gone. May have gone to to the to the to the uh, Board of Education at, at Sam Rayburn's office. Yeah, having a having a bourbon and brass water and so right, 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 right. Yeah, having yeah. a drink, right, in Sam Rayburn's okay. office. Whisked yeah. away, come up, and he says it felt like the stars, the moon, the whole galaxy, the whole yeah. fell on his shoulders. And yeah. the description of the others sitting in the room who were all FDR people looked at them and said, this small, slight guy is going to be president, the, 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 the commander in chief, the, 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 uh, the head of the free world. It was it just does such a disconnect. Yeah, I mean, some a couple of. I mean, they were stunned. They were literally. They were, Truman was stunned, and and the people in the cabinet then were stunned. And uh, one of them, Francis Perkins, um, was 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 weeping and and so on. Well, also, it, the death of Roosevelt was a a shock. I mean, a shock that must have. I mean, very much like the death of the the, the murder of President Kennedy. I mean, the, the country just had, found it very hard to absorb it. People were. You know, you, there are stories of government workers getting in, getting onto the elevator and getting off of the wrong floor. People were completely dis, disoriented. Truman was not was not the worst person that he could have picked. Far from it. He he, he was a he he begun to make a name for himself in the Senate. He had created and then chaired what was called the Truman Committee, which was sort of very diligent about finding you know, waste and fraud in the in the defense industry. And this was before the war, and then and he was on the cover of Time magazine as someone who'd saved millions of dollars for the country. So he was he was not a complete unknown. Roosevelt, but Roosevelt didn't know him. Right. They, 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 they had one lunch after the convention and before the election. That right, never knew him. And there were people who said he spent more time in, you know, staring at the back of a horse's ass than uh, <laughs> just a few it's years true. back, you know, as a farmer. He, but people don't realize this guy was as average as can be. I think the first house he ever uh, he ever lived in on his own was the White House. He lived with his mother-in-law, I believe. 
Uh, yeah, it was it was it was their house. It was it was but yes, it was the his mother in law in in Independence. It became the Truman the Truman House. It was his it was his wife's mother's house. So yeah, you can it wasn't say his. He didn't buy it, right? <laughs> it wasn't his. Here was a guy who was just farming, and just a few years back, before I had a haberdashery that failed. Uh, yeah. um, he 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 was really not what you would say. You know what what the country or people thought the country needed at such a critical time in history. Yeah, it's true. I mean, people felt that way, and 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 that feeling didn't go away for uh, possibly ever, <laughs> but it certainly went away. It perhaps, but but then, of course, Truman won won an election uh, uh, in 1948. But the 1946 midterms were a sign of that. Truman had the Congress. He the Democrats lost Congress for the first time since 1928, and that was and that was on Truman. People said that Truman should resign, and there were Democrats who were saying Truman should resign. His own it was, party. It was a vote of no, yeah, vote of no confidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me just list down a few things that happened during his presidency, which many people, many Americans who don't study history have no idea the tumultuous period in our in our country, in the world, I shouldn't say our country, in the world, just in this span of what, 1945 to 53, so you're talking eight and plus years, remember he was, you know, he, he comes in on the death of a president, which is a terrible position to be in. Regardless, especially a president like FDR, who was larger than life, in going, yeah. you know, three terms already. So uh, uh, FDR was was a master at, at the political game as, as, as well as being a commander in chief. So yeah. Truman comes in, and I'm just going to read these rather quickly, drops the atomic bomb on Japan, leads to VJ Day, victory over Japan, ends World War II. Marshall Plan gives billions of dollars in economic and humanitarian aid to nations of Europe. Then he has Korean Peninsula, the Korean War from 1950 to 53. He fires General uh, uh, Douglas MacArthur, the commander, in a very public way. Uh, and here was a beloved, a beloved uh, a general. He integrates the armed forces, which was amazing at the time. Uh, and um, uh, 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 he, he also supports black legislation in Congress. He was a friend of uh, the new nation of Israel, supports them 11 minutes after the, the Israel uh, is declared uh, its own state uh, against the wishes of the State Department and against the wishes of Marshall, uh, George Marshall as well, right? It was, it was pretty vehement well, was about the, that. Yeah, the, he, he was Secretary, Secretary of State, of State yeah. but he, he was a guy yeah. who, was his, who was friends. He was friendly with yeah, him. Yeah, totally and he, totally he revered, yeah. well, I shouldn't say friendly, he, re he revered Marshall. He revered right. Marshall. Truman thought, Truman thought he was one, one of the great ones of our age, was yeah. the way he put it. This yeah. yeah. And I remember reading, uh, it was in Europe, I remember, his, I think it was McCullough's book, when he, when he gives a toast to uh, to uh, to uh, Marshall. He has tears in his eyes as to what a great man he is, and he saved millions from starvation in uh, East and Europe. Yeah, and, and I, when I, I found something that I found something new, which was that simply that Marshall, in one of Marshall's interviews with Forrest Pogue, he said, well, you know, I could get Truman to do anything. And th then he, he sort of said, but I, I, I didn't. I, I knew, he kind of knew he shouldn't. shouldn't. Yeah. And, uh, but others others realized that he had enormous power. The, the only time Israel was the one case where where he didn't quite succeed, and there was one case later, which I can talk about later on in the forty eight election, where Truman, where Truman went ahead and, and acted on his own without telling Marshall, and that became sort of sort of an embarrassment. Right, 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 right. Let me continue on. So he has a loyalty oaths were issued for federal employees in the Red Scare and the McCarthy era. Uh, yeah. Truman beats uh, uh, Thomas uh, Dewey in underdog election. Famous paper it holds up where they declare Dewey the winner. And Truman wins, uh, and the amazing be, uh, come from behind victory. And NATO was formed during Truman's tenure as uh, president of the United States. So here is a span of time in history where, where everything was thrown on this man's desk to the point yeah. where he had to make decisions. And he's a simple guy, spoke simply and plainly, didn't go to college, as you pointed out. So he's had that inferiority complex, but read amazing he has such a broad range of, of knowledge and my question that i want to discuss with you is how does an ordinary man become extraordinary for a brief span of time when the nation and the world needed him so well you say he was a simple man but no that was his he appeared as a, to be a simple man he was he was a complicated guy but he he hid it behind this sort of this old sort of Missouri sim simplicity, and he was he was also a really good student. He took it he took the job seriously. He he studied and studied and went through briefing papers. I mean, an example of this was um, here's a guy he, he knew nothing about foreign affairs. So th several days after after he, he became president, 
um, Avril Harriman, who was the ambassador to Russia, came over, rushing over to rushing over to Washington, and said, I, so he, "He was really he'd already begun to really distrust Joseph Stalin, and uh, and, he, and he warned Truman that Stalin was going to keep his word in terms of respecting the government of Poland." By that time, Truman had read all the briefing papers; he was completely up to speed, and so he was. So that that counted for a lot. By the way, he also left out. He also the, the United Nations was also formed under Truman, and mm. he was a big supporter of the UN. So yeah, I, but he was uh, so he he became a guy that really jumped into this job, and I think and I think he he didn't bend. He was he he wasn't he couldn't be pushed around. He could be wrong, and he made some he made some decisions that maybe weren't all that all that wise. But he did it. But he but he was firm. He was clear, and he stood up like a he stood up like a guy that that believed what he said. And also, it counted for a lot. I think it remains to count today that the, the respect he had for his own country, for his own his own country's history. Is he he was he he loved the Constitution. He was in love with the Constitution, okay. and that and that sort of quality stayed with him and and made and, made, and gave made him a bigger man, I think, than than we might have they might have been seen at the time. But that 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 enhanced his 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 the way he looked at his own job. So he leaves the presidency, and um, there was a book I read, uh, Bess and Harry's. Amazing Adventure, something to that extent. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that was yeah, fun. Just a fascinating book where he gets into a car with Bess. There was no Secret Service, and at the time there was no presidential pension. Uh, so he was selling, he had to sell a farmland. And um, and here he was getting, he, I think he was offered $100,000 for a car manufacturer, but he did not believe that the office of the presidency was for sale. <laughs> And it's such a joke today where a president leaves office and goes on the speaking circuit and makes millions. But here was a guy who wasn't wealthy, well, by far. And, and, and he goes out and he takes this trip to New York to visit his daughter. And people come up to him when he stops at, 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 at restaurants and at road stops. And, and it, just brilliant. But I just enjoy the social aspect of it. But what... what he, was, um, he was stopped by a cop for speeding, I believe. That. Yeah, and, 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 and Bess yells at him, you know, and I told him to stop speeding, and she was... <laughs> and those days, the roads were scary, you know, there were, there were yeah, dirt yeah. roads, and... and right. he, but what, 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 what happened right after, right after he leaves office, where his popularity is not so high, it's pretty low, in fact, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and how... What does history start to see as, as the time goes on? Uh, when do they start seeing the greatness of Truman so many years later where, where after his, after he leaves the presidency, he's, I, I think they rank him as one of the lowest or one, pretty much in the low category. No, I, I don't know. I mean, those things got, are in such flux, but yeah, yes. true. I mean, yeah, no, and, but it's true when he left, the, but it's interesting. There was, when he left the presidency, the, 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 the public, his estimation had been public opinion was pretty low, but historians, some of them were already, where Henry Steele Commager had already begun, had written a piece in Look magazine in 1951, a year before he left, saying, look, he's, he, by the way, he also, he, he also, he was also, in, all these scandals had followed him, uh, minor scandals by, by today's standards, uh, you know, giving, someone was giving out deep, his chief aide was giving deep freezes to everyone, which was a rare commodity after the, after the war. The Bureau of Internal Revenue was, uh, was, was in deep, deeply immersed in scandal, bribery, and so on. This wasn't Truman's fault, but, but Truman's appointees were, were, were doing it. And he was, um, so, so, so yeah, but Truman really, but he was he. What 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 what, the, what Stop Commager said was, here's a guy. Yeah, look at these things are all, all going on, but we should look at things that were accomplished. He mentioned the Marshall Plan. He mentioned the all these big things that happened under his presidency, and and um, and then and he said that's what's going to be remembered, and and that's what has been remembered. Um, and and Truman himself was not an extraordinary, was not a very imposing figure. If you watch him, if you watch watch him on YouTube or something or some of these clips on TV and so on, he he doesn't seem like. Someone who who fills a room to use today's word, uh, uh, language, but but he but his his deeds fill the room, and I think that's what that's what that's what counts. Yeah, and you know his moral clarity. You know he, he well I wouldn't go that far. Let me rephrase his decisiveness. There was yeah. you knew where you stood, you knew where he stood, and you knew where the country stood. And you know especially in these times where uh, you know it's like stepping on a banana peel. You know politicians flip yeah. flop so quickly. Administrations uh, uh, um, talk walk back certain statements, 
And here you had a guy where literally he creates the buck stops here. It was, it was, I was no going to reach for, I have a plaque, the buck stops here. I was going to reach for it, but I'm not going, but it, but it, it, by the way, that, that plaque was nowhere to be found. It was not in his office, right, but right. Yeah, it, it, came, it became associated with him. And he, and yeah, he, he, he owned up to, he owned up to everything. He was, uh, and his, uh, he, he, he made what sometimes he used the word jump decisions, where for decisions basically made on the spur of the moment. And, uh, and uh, I mean, some some of them were sort of inevitable or unavoidable. I mean, even the, 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 the dropping the atomic bomb was it was I, will, I wouldn't even call it a decision. He he gave the order, but it was or that 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 question was pretty well going to happen. That question was already in motion. Right. So yeah. looking through the lens of history, and especially with the amazing research that you did here with the journalist side, uh, what could present day politicians? I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You're on the Democrats, Republican. Doesn't matter to me. What can they learn? What lessons could they learn from Truman and his presidency? By the way, so, I, I've, been, I've been on both sides of the aisle politically, so I can sort of speak in the sense of, uh, I, I mean, I'm, 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 not a, I'm not an ideologue. I think they can learn from here someone who really studied history and really and, and really thought about the, 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 the welfare of, 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 of the country. He, he, really, uh, he really saw one of the duties of a, of a politician was to make lives better for for his fellow man and for his fellow Americans, it's interesting. I mean, he was um, he he was not a big New Dealer, but and 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 uh, and he didn't do a lot of make a lot of social programs. He, but 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 he did um, he did he, there were some incremental changes in the Social Security. But one thing he really tried, he tried several times to get get national health insurance for the country. Yeah. He tried it, and he was aware that that was something Roosevelt hadn't done. I could do that, he said to himself. Well, he didn't do it, but he tried. He tried seriously, and he right, right within within a few months after taking office, he tried and he tried to. Get Again, in, he tried again in '47, which after the after losing losing Congress and lost the election, and he tried again in 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 uh, in, in '52, and uh, the, the the American Medical Association spent millions of dollars to, to defeat it, but 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 that 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 eventually became um, when Lyndon Johnson signed the Medicare bill. He, he came out to Independence, Missouri and invited Truman and his wife, Bess, to sit next to him and gave them Medicare card number one and Medicare yeah, card number yeah, two. Yeah, and yeah. In, I was in, in, in Truman's last days, he was in the hospital in Kansas City and Medicare paid for his room, $59 a day. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you, you said there was a 30-year gap uh, between McCullough's book and your book. And, uh, and, and when I spoke to you last week, uh, we had a call just go over a few things. I just uh, wanted to thank you for, for coming on the show and talk about your book. You mentioned something to me, and you said that, uh, I said, why do you need another book? You said, well, there's so much information that has come out in the past 30 years from personal archives, from, from government archives and stuff. What are some of those things that uh, if a reader would read this book, they would say, wow, well, I did not know that? I would, I mean, there are lots, but one thing that particularly engaged me was the, was the Korean War. There's, there's, that's a, there's a lot about the Korean War that we still we still don't know a lot about the Korean War, but we but, you know who how did it start? Why did it start? Um, what 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 was what was Stalin's role in? Well, I mean, uh, and what what was the role of of, of Zhou Enlai and Mao Zedong in getting us into it? And these questions are still some of them are still up, up open to questions, but some of them are, we, we we can sort of answer now. For example, we didn't know we now know it's pretty clear now that the Chinese would not have gotten into the war as they had. Um, in 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 the uh, in, in the late uh, fall of 1950, had not had Truman or had the this intelligence that, that was coming from to through India to us from China, saying don't cross the 38th parallel. That was the sort of our dividing line between North Korea and South Korea, and that was and if that hadn't happened, um, who knows? The war would never have gone. I don't think the war would never would never have gone. It just just gone 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 so bad. The war, you know, the war began. As you know, the war began after the after North Korea invaded the South in, in late June 1950, and I don't think Truman had much felt he had much choice. The first place, the United Nations had, had to he felt it was a duty to to, to defend a, a nation that was being under, under attack, and and uh, so and and so the United States responded, and Truman ordered and MacArthur to send troops and uh, got allies involved in it. But the the war could have sort of turned around very quickly afterward when MacArthur had this sort of brilliant invasion of Inchon, which is uh, from about 30 miles from Seoul, and the war turned around. At one point earlier in the war, the North had con controlled 90% of, of, of Korea. After Inchon, the, the North was, on, was in retreat. And, and, and the war could have, could have ended then. It could have ended then, in, in, in my view. And, but, then, but then Truman let MacArthur, MacArthur thought that as the North had wanted to unify the country under its government, MacArthur thought, well, he could unify the country under 
under our government. I, I, I began to think about it in terms of Gulf War One and Gulf War Two. Gulf War One was a big success. George W. Bush was determined to push the Iraqis out of Kuwait. Now, that was that was a success. They pushed them out. The war ended. Gulf War Two was a regime change, and then. And as we know, how that ended, or never, or never we, ended. We don't, we don't do well with regime change. We do well with, with you know, and, and George and George H. W. Mm-hmm. understood that I think brilliantly. He, that he did. Uh, you know, he, he the did. objective and, was sim- keep the objective simple and something we can accomplish. And once it's done, stop. And everyone was yelling, "Why don't you go for regime change?" I remember at the time it was ninety ninety. It was the summer, July of nineteen ninety. And why did you go for regime change? Get rid of Saddam Hussein. Look, he was a diplomat. He understood. He had a broader perspective of history and. You know, it's easier said than done. It just doesn't work. And if it does work, let me say, rephrase, it's very, very messy. Very messy. That's, that's exactly right. And, and the Korean War turned into Gulf War Two. Yeah. That's good. That's, I never thought of that. that. Yeah. Yeah. 37,000 37, Americans died. It was a terrible. And, and there wasn't the sort of reaction here as there had been during Vietnam because well, there had never been a war like this. And so there weren't college protests, even though people were being drafted. It was, and 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 it was, and and there was, uh, it, it was just nothing. Like, like probably a million Chinese died, hundreds of thousands of Koreans, North and South. And it was, it was, and and then furthermore, um, we, the, the United States and the Allies, literally just, just because of MacArthur order, to just we destroyed North Korea. We we burned and napalmed almost every little village and, and township. And that that what that left was a lot of resentment. By by uh, by 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 the great leader of North Korea, and it's, of course his yeah. grandson is now the leader of North Korea, yeah. and that's what they hate us. Yeah, in a way that the Vietnamese don't hate us. The Vietnamese hate the French apparently, but not they don't hate us because that wasn't our war. This be- Korea became our war, and they, and they hate us for it. Yeah, and the uh, I had I had an uncle who uh, passed away a few years back who was a Marine yeah. in um in uh in in the Korean War, and he told me he, he used to say the the conditions of that war were just brutal. It was brutally hot in the summer and terrifyingly cold in the winter. It was, the, 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 uh, the terrain was difficult. It was really, really a, a, a terrible, terrible war. And you were talking well, about- when you fly, Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, continue. No, no, when you fly over, when you fly over the place and you, you, yeah, you can see how could they ever, ever fight a war there? There were some great sort of oral histories about the war. One of John McCain's favorite books is a book called This Kind of War, which is wonderful. It's still in print. And that sort of tell, gives you a picture of, of, of that war. It's really something. And, and it was a huge tragedy for them and for us. Yeah, you know, history could have been uh, so different. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So, so um, what, when, when you, Truman the person, Truman the man, because I've read some things which I found so interesting in your book, uh, is how, and I, you know, look, it's human nature. We all kind of have our own way of, of filling in the blanks in our memory of the way things happen. But uh, you point out several times, and, and, I, and I applaud you for doing that, uh, where it seems not that he flip-flops, but he remembers a different history. I mean, it's not even close to what actually happened. He fabricates things. He, he, he builds up events that might not have taken place. But in his own mind, uh, he's, he's hell-bent and determined that these things did happen. Yeah, I think that's just, that's just sort of his very human side. Um, for example, when he had his first meeting with, with with Molotov, the Soviet foreign minister, and it, it, it was not a friendly conversation, but it was but it was but it was it was sort of tough tough diplomacy, often mostly about about Poland and and the the government of Poland. Later on, true, remember, I it was I hit him on right and the left of the yeah, right. and that, that's not the way anyone in the room did not did not see it did not see it that way. And he would remember he he would recall having conversations with Roosevelt where they would discuss history. That never happened but he 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 so wanted it to happen he so would have liked roosevelt's approval that he made it in his mind it began to happen i think that's a very human thing a lot of a lot of people do it i've, I've probably done it i've probably done that sort of thing too i'm not aware of it but i'm no, no, so science tells us that we do fill in the blanks our brains do not like yeah. blank spaces and we fill it in but you know when you look yeah. at some of these a, a possible events like with truman uh, speaking with roosevelt you know, anyone could just take a step back and say that could never have happened. You know, Truman was right. down here. Roosevelt was here. He would never talk to him that way. He would never deal with him that way. He would never have right. that confidence. It's, it's just, it's just a funny thing. But, um, but, but what I what I find so um, 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 interesting, really not interesting. I, I shouldn't say interesting. Let me rephrase. Uh, really admirable is his relationship with his wife. It was it, you know, in in a Washington plagued with scandal with womanizing. This man was about as straight laced as you can get. Oh, I can't imagine. Yes, I couldn't. You know, he, 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 
I said fell in love, but he because he was very young. But he he, he first noticed his wife, Bess, uh, in, in when he when they were seven years old. He remembered this this golden girl, and he and he never got over her, and never got over her, and he went after her, and went and he, he courted her for years, and 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 then before, and before he he went he, he went to, to war in World War One, he, he went to set to France, and 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 it wasn't until after that because he did, he said I'm not going to come home a cripple and 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 burden you with that after yeah, the war. That's yeah. that's when they did be married, and then so it was it, I would I, it was it was a completely he was totally devoted to her to him to her, and one of the few places in the book. Where the I mean, where, the, where they had a real it was a squabble. It was very painful, and Truman, Truman had had to go home, for, went home for Christmas. I think he had to go back to Washington. This this job took it out of him, and Bess 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 really scolded him for that, and that, that hurt him. And he really, and he he apparently wrote a letter to her where he really let let loose. Because they, because he we know that he called his daughter Margaret and said go to the post office and burn get that letter and burn, yeah. and burn, and burn yeah. it. And, and you, know, you know when you, when, you, when you, you didn't say you, you know with I, I went the account that you put in the book uh, as yeah. I'm reading this I'm saying my gosh this poor guy uh, you know you didn't do it justice uh, Jeff but read the book you folks He'll, he did it justice in the book uh, uh, Truman goes home during a storm where it's it, it's 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 dangerous. For planes to fly, he finally pushes this plane. They say, "Mr. President, you cannot fly in the, in this weather," and he pushes through. Takes him six hours through thunderstorms, through snowstorms, whatever. He lands in Missouri, goes, in, and Bess greets him like, "What the heck?" <laughs> so you came yeah. home now, like we like like he was he was shocked. It, you know, yeah. it was it it was something. Uh, you know, just wow. You told it better. Yes, you, you told it better than I did just now. Yeah, it's it's, it's in the book. That those, those that that plane flight was really dangerous. I mean, they didn't want to. I mean, he had to push. The, he had to push the you know the 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 military to fly him to fly him home. And uh, it, 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 actually, I think a couple of editorials at the time scolded him for taking a chance like that. Yeah, yeah. No, when I was yeah. reading it, I never knew about that. And um, when you're reading this, and you get to, you know people who read this have to remember. Uh, I'm sure they do that. This was a time where air travel was not as safe as it was, is today. And that many yeah. people died in, in plane crashes, uh, especially, and the equipment, the weather equipment was nowhere near where it is today. And the safety equipment and all these things. And he pushed forward to see her, I think it was a one day st just to stop, turn around and come back. And she, I don't know what she, I don't, I don't recall, please tell me what she, she responded to him. But it was something to the effect of now you come home or something to that effect. I don't, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, but it's, it, 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 it's basically, basically that. And basically he said, you, you made me feel like, like dirt. And 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 uh, and and it was it was very it was it was a very very rough and he I said, he came back to Washington deep, deeply de deeply depressed by the whole experience but that that also shows how devoted he was to her that he would that he would do this just to be just to have one day of Christmas in in, in, yeah. in Missouri with, with, yeah with his, with yeah his I, you know it's so admirable that he wrote to her and he expressed his like he, 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 he spoke he, which is like I, I would think and and you know better uh, uh, John Adams and his wife kind of relationship where. Adams would ask his wife, uh, Abigail, for ideas and thoughts and bounce ideas as an equal. Truman does that with, Be with, uh, with Bess. He's, he's, he's constantly in communication with her, wants to win her approval, asks her for advice, and, and looks to her as a beacon of light. Yeah, he was a really devoted to his family. You know, he wrote to his mother almost every day while he was while he was president. I mean, you could the letters to his mother just didn't stop. I think the day, uh, the day that Roosevelt died, he was, he was in the midst of writing a letter to his mother. And those letters are extraordinary. I, I quote, I quote a lot of them in his letter. Mm. And 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 he wrote to and he wrote to Bess all the time when when what she didn't she was not always with him in Washington. She was she 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 didn't particularly like Washington. She she was okay living on Upper Connecticut Avenue when he was a congressman and a, I'm sorry he was a senator. But when he was vice president and president, it was it wasn't nearly as much fun. And she was she liked to spend time in Missouri with her with with her family. Then yeah, there's the reverence and respect that he has towards his mom when he becomes president. The first time she's on a plane, she's 93. And yeah. you see, you have a great picture in here. Uh, I think it was, I th you think, um, yeah, it was a, a beautiful picture of him helping his mother, you know, as he was president of the United States, mm -hmm. taking his mother, you know, carefully her hand in her arm and escorting her off the plane. And she has a growl on, you know, a scrawl on her face. Like she wasn't too happy. She, if she would have known all these photographers were out there, how are you? They're photographers. Yeah. Well, I should have stayed home. You know, these, yeah. are, these are pretty private people. It's amazing when, 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 when the war with, when Germany surrendered, he called his mother 
Yeah, and then it was, it was a reporter in the room. We could only hear her side of the conversation. But yes, Harry, yes, that was good. Harry, you're going to come home soon. I, said, I guess I'm being careful, Harry. And, and it was it was a wonderful. Yeah, he was a very, very devoted son and and, and husband and, 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 and father. And father, you know, when yeah. he punched uh, he punched one uh, news reporter who said who mocked uh, Margaret singing. Was that uh, he didn't punch him, but oh. he threatened. He he threatened to, and he said, "You you may need a you may need an athletic supporter if I run into you." <laughs> right. it's quite a quite a letter. That, that letter should not, you know, it, it, Tr- Tr- Truman would have been protected by by his staff, uh, but his 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 press secretary, who was a who was a, fr- a boyhood friend, had just died, so he was able to sneak out and put it in a mailbox. Usually, it would have been in his outbox. Someone would have probably intercepted it. It never would have gotten to the critic. A guy named Paul Hume, who was the music critic of the Washington Post. By the way, I met, I knew Paul Hume. I, when I worked at the Washington Post, it was just after Paul Hume had retired. He would mm. sort of show up like a ghost in, this, in the newsroom every now and then. I never, I always wanted to ask him about that. I never did. I, I didn't know I was going to be writing a book about Truman someday. But and also, was, you were uh, probably a pretty young guy when he was around there, right? You weren't going to poke the yeah. bear on that one. A mere child, a mere child yeah. <laughs> uh, so last thing, uh, Jeff, with the time we have, uh, why should, and I have my own answer for this, and I want to hear yours. Why should young people today read what many would consider ancient history? Why should they read this book? Especially given well, the backdrop of, of, let me just make that point, that, yeah, make sure. that question a little more pointed for you. Especially in light of how this country has bifurcated between right and left, conservative, liberal, left, right, to the point, why should a young person read ancient history on the trials of Harry S. Truman? I mean, well, it's not so, it's not so, it's funny, it's, it feels ancient, 70 years old. I think because they can see, I mean, they, they, they can see the, the connection between then and now, but they can also sort of see how this country was and how it could be again. There was, you know, we, we used the word, we sort of left the word bipartisanship, of course, and, and in those days, there, it was, there was such a thing. The, the Marshall Plan was passed. I mean, George Marshall was not the only one, but it was many people came up with this idea. In fact, Truman wasn't even briefed about the Marshall Plan until after Marshall gave his famous speech. But the, the support for it was pretty on both sides. It would never have happened without support of Arthur Bandenberg, who was the who was the chairman of the Foreign Relations. He was a Republican from Michigan. And he was the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, and which happened after the disastrous 1946 election. And that was and that one of the a, a, a congressman named Richard Nixon of California. Yeah. Traveled to Europe after the war with the was with with Christian Herter's fact finding committee. He was he was a congressman then, and he came back and said, "My gosh, the the, the the suffering we're seeing, we have to su- support." It. And this so there was there was real bipartisan support for this for this kind of thing. When Truman Truman when Truman ran in 1948, he talked about the Do Nothing Congress, but it was a Do Lot Congress. This was a Congress that had passed the Atomic Energy Act of 1946, and and, and uh, so uh, and and so it was a, just a di- different time, and people disagreed, but they did they sure hell didn't hate each other. And also, there was we. I think the other thing which we've talked about. I'm not the first one to point out that we everyone could kind of agree on the same set of facts. Today, people don't even agree on what really happened. I mean, the idea no one could no one doubted that Truman won the election in 1948 or that Eisenhower won the election in 1952. It was it was a done deal. People saw the votes, saw the results, saw the electoral college, and that this happens today that anyone could even doubt a reality. That's when that's when people's that's when that's when the country seems seems slightly. In, in in trouble, and and I think we have to get. I don't know how we get past that. that with, but if we can't agree on reality, then I, then we can't agree on much of anything else. And that's our that's our big problem. And that was not an issue when Truman was president. People yeah. could hate Truman, could disagree, but we all everyone kind of agreed on what reality was. I forgot where I read this. It might be something that you wrote. I, I've read so much over the past week or so. So forgive me if I'm quoting something you might have written. Uh, but I was reading somewhere that said there were differences of opinion, but not differences of principles. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I mean that's absolutely true. I, I, I could, that, 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 that's the truth. There, there really was. There were a couple of there were there were always a couple of loonies in, in, in Congress, but that was not, but that was not the rule. That was the great exception. And and people people disagreed. It was Bob T- Robert Taft, or the conservative Republican from Ohio, who really disagreed with almost with a lot of what Truman did. He was he 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 really opposed the Truman Doctrine, for example, which was which was basically coming to coming to the aid of any country that was threatened. Actually, it turns out Taft may have been right. Taft may have been right. That may have that's the thing that may have led us into a lot of unnecessary conflicts. That's and actually George Kennan, who was the the, the who in the State Department, actually wor- worried about that sort of thing, about worried about commitments. Uh, that we shouldn't be making, and that so, but that, so there were disagreements, but there were disagreements of of, of the, the principles of what this country stood for, our, our our values, and so on, and that's it. 
And that's that, that's absolutely true. Yeah, there was it's a something, something that we should treasure. And if you read this book, maybe you'll remember what or what you'll 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 read about what it was like and hope it can be that that way again. We can we can all disagree about what, what we should do or have done, but we, we shouldn't disagree on what, what say, what reality is and yeah. what this country should stand for. Yeah, we were still all, you know, rowing the boat in the same direction. And yeah. uh, it might have been differences of opinion based on based on region, based on party, based on ideas. But in terms of principles, everyone was more or less in agreement. You have the loony fringe, but, but put that aside. But they were in agreement on what was the right thing to do and what was in the best interest of this country. Right. I mean, speaking not, not to bring today's, well, I will bring today's issues into it. Here, here's this, it's fascinating. Here's, here's Liz Cheney, one of the most conservative members of Congress. Everybody, Democrats love her. Well, some Republicans love her. Why? Because she's, because she's integrity, just a simple integrity. She's standing, saying what I believe and what she believes. And that's, that's enough. That's enough for a lot of people. When, when I say that I've been a Democrat and a Republican, that's true. I voted for Bill Clinton, and then I voted for Bob Dole. I mean, I think people that that's how I think that's how we all were at one point, but yeah. not not perhaps not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah, that, that that is true. That is true, folks. The name of the book is "The Trials of Harry S. Truman." And by the way, which I learned something else: the S does stand for something. Well, yeah, I mean, it it, it refers to to two uh, to two grandparents, but so it could be one of two people. Uh, and and uh, and it, it's true, but there, and and I got lots of letters saying there's no period. And yes, there is a period. Truman used the period most of the time in the archives. In, in Independence assured me that the period is the correct way to go. Harry S. Period Truman. Yeah, that was something we learned in school. Harry S. Truman. The S didn't stand for anything, but he wanted to put that in there where there's no period. And then when I read this and I saw the period, you put that right on the cover. Uh, the period's <laughs> there, and the S did stand for something. It wasn't just a, a placeholder. But uh, uh, really, really, um, really, you, you could see how much, uh, how long did this take you to write, by the way? It, the whole thing probably took close to seven years, but that's yeah. writing, researching, traveling. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, I mean, just simply, yeah, it just takes a lot, takes a lot of time. And, oh, and then you get, wow. and then you get caught up, you, you get caught up, you want to, and you want to double check things and triple check things. And then you, and, and then you find, I, you get to be, I, I, for one of the people I, I, I got interested in was a guy who was forgotten by history, Brian McMahon. Yeah. A senator yeah. From, 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 from Connecticut. Uh, he was a, he was, he was actually a, a Roman Catholic who just might've been the first Roman Catholic president. He died very young of, of a very virulent, uh, aggressive cancer, but he was the one who, who created the, the, the atomic, who was the, the author of the Atomic Energy Act of 1946. And so, yeah, there was, a, there was, a, it was a different, it was a, a different era. And, and that was, uh, so that, so anyway, that was fun. It was, it was, it was fun getting into that. And so getting into these detours was, was part of what, so I, 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 I found his daughter uh, and, and, and to talk about it. So I got some sense of what like, what it was like when, you know, they, they, they lived, they, they, they lived in, in this neighborhood in Washington where Truman Truman would, would, would come by and have, and have coffee with them. It was a different, different era. Um, and that was really, 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 really interesting. I got, I, I had, I had lunch with Dean Atchison's son, David. Hmm. It was uh, and I, 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 he was, he was, he was wonderful. He, he, he must have been about ninety three or so when I met him. He, he, uh, he, uh, sadly, he died a couple of years ago. But he was a, he was a great source of sort of firsthand things. He told me about going about a party at his at his father's farm where Truman came out on a Sunday afternoon and went swimming. <laughs> <laughs> they, they all ran to they all ran to the to, to the lake and so on. That was a, I say, and, and so that's what that 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 that's what that was the fun of that. And that's why it took a long time. And then the travels took the travels. Travels going to different archives, different parts of the country, and so on. Yeah, wow, great, uh, super. So, when did this book come out? How recent? Uh, March of March eighth of so, so, oh. so three and a half months ago. So yeah. Right, if you're okay, great. I wish it right. continued brand success. Brand new. Brand I wish it continued success. Really, really great stuff. The name, folks, is the trials of Harry S. Truman, the extraordinary presidency of an ordinary man, nineteen forty five to nineteen fifty three by the great Jeffrey Frank. Jeff, thanks so much for being on the show and continued success. Really great job. Charles, it was really, in, really enjoyable. Thanks a lot for having me. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Charles Mizrahi Show. If you're a new listener, welcome. If you've been listening for a while, we're glad to have you back. Either way, we'd love to know what you think of the show. Please leave a review if you listen on Apple Podcasts. Reviews make it easier for others to find the show. You can also see the video of the interview on the Charles Mizrahi Show channel on YouTube.